really a flawed thing to do because here we get very short rainfall events and so we might have six hours of evapotranspiration with an hour or two of rainfall where there was negligible amount of evapotranspiration. So to completely ignore ET on a rainy day is totally inappropriate. So uh, these are the three methods, Penman, Teeth, Priestley, Taylor, Hargrave, Samani, they all look similar. These two are a little bit higher, um, but I, I was very pleased with the results. They look quite reasonable, but of course, a future work will try to validate that. We also compared the results with a model that was developed at the University of Puerto Rico, Mayak West, called PRET, and it gives long-term average uh, ET values, and I just wanted to compare that, and you see that the, the results that we got from the three methods in every case were lower than PRET. The lowest values of the ET were associated with the Gularte site, which is near Aguntas. And the solar radiation there, the uh, daily integrated solar radiation was 92 from 92 watts per meter squared from the from the model, no, observed, and the model produced 118. So those are quite similar. And the, the estimated temperature, I should say the observed was 15.8 degrees C and the estimated was 15.2. So those are not too bad, but of course, that's just one point. Um, so the future work, we want to validate, rigorously validate and calibrate the solar radiation product and develop a high resolution solar insulation product for PR and the outlying islands. So it would include Mona and hopefully the Virgin Islands. And these data will be invaluable for agricultural studies. We can get evapotranspiration photo period information and photosynthetic potential and other things. This will also be useful for non-agricultural uses such as solar energy studies and studies related to Caribbean climate and medical studies concerned with sunshine related hazards such as skin cancer and light sensitivity, etc. I didn't mention it in this slide, but we also will validate evapotranspiration and the way we do that, we have this instrument in MyQuest. It's an eddy covariance system, and we can we can estimate uh, or measure. You know, really, it's an estimation, but it's a pretty accurate method of getting evapotranspiration in the field. And here's another method that we developed at UPRM. It's called the ET station, and this was at Juan Diaz in the experiment station. And these are beans that are growing there. Another method that may, might be a little better to use is this synthelometer. It measures ET and energy fluxes over a longer path length, uh, one to four kilometers. And so since our pixel scale is one kilometer, it might be better, uh, one thing I wanna do for watershed studies is get an average ET over the square kilometer. So that might include forest, that might include some urban area, that might include some agriculture. So what we'd like to get is an average uh, evapotranspiration over that scale. And so the expected outcomes are to, to produce, provide a, a near real-time reference evapotranspiration product via a public accessible website <coughs> uh, capable of producing one kilometer resolution of not only this potential ET, but actual ET um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip this uh, detail here because uh, it's, it's not important to, to go into that. But there's different ways that we can get from here to here, from the potential to the actual. And so we have a couple methods that we're considering. And the proposed system will be capable of performing a soil water balance as well. Um, I have students working this summer on this problem, the soil water balance and the balance would include rainfall, surface runoff, actual evapotranspiration, actual, I'm sorry, aquifer recharge, and change in soil moisture storage. It should be completely automated, the system, and require very little maintenance. Uh, the proposed system will serve as an expandable platform in which 
agricultural and non-agricultural products can be added. And it should provide um, uh, a unified mapping platform for, for evaluating climate change in the future. And so I, I shared with you uh, this, this uh, preliminary work of remote sensing based technique for estimating evapotranspiration in Puerto Rico. It relies on the GO satellite. We looked at an example from March 5th, 2009. These three methods for evapotranspiration were considered. This was funded by NOAA Crest, NSF CASA, and uh, some money from the USDA Hatch Fund project. And again, if anybody's interested in some papers, you can uh, visit that website. Okay, thank you very much.